I just want to do a little bit of an explainer on my Conde Corso's raw diet while we let Joey Justice enjoy his chicken carcass. I do have an online raw feeding course that will teach you guys everything you need to know when feeding a raw diet. That way you don't create any nutritional dif deficiencies, which in the long run can be devastating to your dog. It can create a ton of health issues. So no matter what you do when you do a raw diet, just make sure you understand what you're doing, understand what you're putting in your dog's body. That way they have the best, most optimal outcomes. Of course, link in the description, use code Jason to save 10%. I've been feeding a raw diet for seven years now, and I've seen so many benefits, not just in my own dogs, but other people's dogs as well that have taken the course and, and DM me their, their huge successes when feeding a raw diet. Tons of stories about skin allergies getting cleared up, seizure activity being better controlled, GI upset being fixed, joint integrity just on an aging dog, all of a sudden their dog can move better. Tons of different success stories coming just by feeding a raw diet. I do want a preference though, because in the world today with humans and dogs, everybody likes to just think diet can fix everything. Diet will fix 100% of every single issue and that's unfortunately not the case, it's a fantasy. I do feel like diet is one of the most important things that we can do for our dogs and for ourselves, and it can get rid of a lot of issues. But sometimes, yes, you do have to give your dog medication to clear up certain issues. The benefits of a raw diet that I've seen, far less allergy issues, especially with their skin. Their coat becomes ultra soft and shiny. They get that puppy fur back to them. Far less shedding. Of course, dogs are gonna shed no matter what, especially during shedding season but it is dramatically decreased. Raw fed dogs are typically more muscle tone because they're getting the species appropriate diet they need. They're getting all that meat, all that protein, all that good healthy fats, which helps build muscle. And not only builds the muscle and tendon stronger, but it helps preserve it as they age as well. Far less GI upset. Overall, longevity is increased because they're not getting processed foods. They're not getting kibble, which is highly processed. As you guys know with humans, processed food is filled with chemicals, toxins, and it's just not healthy for us. And it's the same for our dogs. Better joint integrity and a lot less poop. So what happens is there's a lot of filler in kibble, which your dogs don't digest and absorb. So they poop it out essentially. With a raw diet, so much of the food is absorbed. They have far less stool and you don't even have to clean up your yard because the stool ends up almost petrifying and turning to dust. Myths you may hear when it comes to feeding a raw diet, dogs cannot eat raw meat, they'll get sick with things like salmonella from the raw meat. A dog's stomach is highly acidic and their digestive system is short. It's not long like ours. Bacteria is typically killed when ingested and passed within four to six hours as waste. Digestion in our dogs is very short and the bacteria does not stay in their body for very long. If you look over the past couple of years on recalls on dog foods, so many kibble companies are being recalled for salmonella. Another myth, dogs can't eat bones. Raw bones, especially poultry bones, are very soft and easy for your dog to digest. What you can't ever do is give your dog a bone that is cooked or heated. That's when they end up getting brittle and they splinter and they can end up damaging your dog's intestinal tract and even kill them possibly. Next myth, feeding your dog a raw diet is going to make them aggressive and give them a first for blood. Feeding raw doesn't result in aggressive behavior. But what can happen is if you feed your dog an improperly balanced raw diet lacking in essential amino acid tryptophan, this can have a negative impact on the serotonin in your dog's brain. As a result of this, your dog may become aggressive because Tryptophan deficiency, aggression is a symptom, but that can easily be reversed once you start feeding your dog the balanced diet they need. That's why I'm always telling people, just don't hop into raw right away. Do your research, take the online course, look up some stuff online, consult with somebody that feeds raw so you understand what you're doing. Next myth is feeding cooked meat is better than feeding raw meat. Now, cooking meat will destroy and alter some of those micronutrients that's extremely beneficial for your canine. The proteins, vitamins, fats, and minerals are all chemically changed as soon as you start the cooking process. And in contrast, other nutrients are liberated via cooking them as they're not as bioavailable in their raw form, such as many greens, for example. Therefore, cooking food makes some nutrients less available and other nutrients more available. When it comes to feeding your dog meat, you don't want to cook it if possible. There are two basic ways to feed raw. There's barfs and there's prey. And then there's like stuff in between, which is basically what I do. So a barf diet incorporates a little bit of fruit, veggies, nuts, seeds, um, along with all the muscle, meat your dog needs, the organ and the bone. Where a prey model diet, just think of a dog's going out to hunt 
prey, let's say they caught a rabbit, they're going to, you would feed the dog, you just give them the rabbit. You wouldn't cut it up, you just give them the rabbit and they'd eat everything, the fur, the bone. Now, most of us don't do that. We do something called Franken-Prey, which is we just piecemeal together parts of an animal to make a complete meal. And that's what I do. So the basic rule that I follow and that I have laid out in my raw feeding course is an 80-10-10 split. 80% being lean muscle meat, 10% being bone, 10% being organ. And half of that 10% of the organ meat is always liver. So every single meal he's getting 5% of liver. Organs are essential. It's like the multivitamin in the animal world. That's where all, so many vitamins and minerals are packed into those organs. So don't skip out on organs. On top of what I just laid out, I'm a big believer in Eastern medicine and their whole practice with foods, hot foods, cold foods. And by hot food and cold food, I'm not talking about the temperature of the actual food. I'm talking about of what it does to your dog's internals. Some foods are going to heat up your dog. Some foods are going to cool down your dog. A lot of times, if you have a dog who is running hot, if your dog's always by the AC, if your dog just always feels warm, if it doesn't like to be covered up to a blanket, I would say you have a hot dog. <laughs> no pun intended. You'd want to try the best you can to avoid meats that are gonna heat them up further because that could cause skin allergies. Chicken, for example, is a heating food. Beef is neutral and duck is a cooling food. Bruce is always running hot. Unfortunately, duck is far too expensive to feed a 155 pound dog. Now let's say your dog's always cold, likes to be covered with a blanket, always searching for that heater laying by the fire. You probably have a cold dog, so you're gonna wanna feed them things that are gonna just internally warm up your dog. And for some reason, don't ask me why, a lot of dogs, especially mastiffs, just don't do well on chicken, and I don't understand why. Joey Justice does amazing on chicken, and this is like one of the only things he likes that he eats no problem. All kind of courses seem to be very, very picky with eating. Um, Justice is no exception, but with chicken, he just eats it up all the time, no issues, and he does very well with it. Where Bruce likes chicken, but if I give him too much chicken, he starts to get itchy, very allergic reacting. Just remember, just like every human on the planet is different and how every human is going to react to eating things differently, so are our dogs, even within the same breed. So you're probably wondering where you can get your raw meat. Um, raw diet, especially with a giant breed dog, is expensive and there's no way around that unless you're a hunter. You should probably work on some hunting skills. So you can go about it multiple ways. You can get meat from your grocery store, which is gonna be one of your cheaper options or you can purchase pre-made raw mixes that are complete with everything your dog needs with muscle meat, ground bone, and the organ meat. Some individuals have the luxury of a local butcher that still processes their meats in-house around me. There are none that do so, but if so, I recommend contacting them and see if you can work out a deal with them. A pre-made raw mix is always gonna be the most costly, but if you have the means, it really does take out a lot of the guesswork and it saves you a ton of time prepping the food. And I'll leave a link to Buck Wild Bison where I get a lot of my raw organs for the dogs. And they also just started selling a, a pre-made raw mix. If you do use that link, use code Jason to save 10% off your order. Super appreciate that if you guys do that. And from Buck Wild Bison, um, I'll let you know some of Bruce's favorite meats. Bison heart, absolute favorite from Bruce. Heart though, when you're feeding a raw diet, I know it's an organ in us, it's an organ in our dogs, but when they're eating it, it's counted as muscle meat, not organ meat. Another muscle meat that Bruce absolutely loves is uh, bison tongue, um, cow tongue, bison pizzle, and they love the tripe as well. If Bruce just ate those every meal, he would be so content. A lot of vets, unless you have a holistic vet, they don't really support a raw diet and everybody has their own agenda and their own reasons. Um, so possible reasons that your vet may not like that. Um, they just aren't educated on pet nutrition. It's fact, vets don't go to school for pet nutrition. Sure, they take one or two classes, but that's not what they go to school for. Another reason may be financial. Far more financially beneficial for your vet if you're buying vet prescribed dog food versus feeding raw. Also with raw, guess what? There tends to be a lot less sickness and disease resulting in less vet visits. And there's a worry that a lot of people just start feeding a raw diet without understanding what they're doing, which as I described at the start of this video, can lead to micronutrient deficiencies, which in the long term can really harm your dog in that itself, leading to sickness and disease. Every vet has their own beliefs and agendas. Some will be for what they feel is best. Some will be for financial gain. In the end, it's up to you to what you put in your dog's body. If you're feeding your dog a raw diet, you're in better control and you know more about what's going into your dog's body 
versus if you feed them kibble that's oh, no, ran right. through a plant, ran through machinery, there's chemicals added to it, all this other jazz. So just remember that you always got to do what's best for you. Hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, Bruce Wayne, Joey, Jess, and myself. See you later. Peace.